I'm Dewey Thompson, Creative Director at Pickerel Pie, and in this episode of Corporate Film School, this talking head is going to take aim at the problem with talking heads. Not the band, who sadly don't seem inclined to reunite, but the ubiquitous documentary trope the band name references. Coincidentally, the talking heads lived, wrote much of their first two albums, and actually recorded Fear of Music in a building just up the street from Pickerel Pie Studio. So Tina Weymouth says the band took its name from an issue of TV Guide, which explained the term used by TV studios to describe a head and shoulder shot of a person talking as all content, no action. It's TV, video, supposedly the most boring format. Exactly. Unfortunately, companies rarely have the foresight or the inclination to film when there's actually stuff happening. The stories captured by corporate video are almost always told without any action footage, which is why corporate videos typically comprise talking heads intercut with stock footage as B-roll. Without footage of what happened, the next most dynamic approach might well be somebody on camera telling us about it. It's simple and efficient, so talking heads aren't going away. Before we look at some alternatives, we should acknowledge another issue with talking heads, diversity. Since leadership positions at most large companies, and so the people most likely to be tapped for on-camera commentary, are still predominantly held by white men, and since, well, every single one of our clients is concerned about presenting more diversity in their communications, there's this additional challenge with conventional talking heads. For clients, this means thinking in new ways about who else can tell your stories. It's an opportunity to empower new faces within the company. But even if you succeed in diversifying, which would be a big win, you've still got a talking head. So how do you mix it up? You should try hard to at least combine the often unavoidable talking heads with other visuals to make your video more engaging. Use voiceover with B-roll. New York City is beautiful animate key quotes and type. And this is not easy to do concisely or authentically, but try to capture necessary content in a conversation between two people or more. How would you describe this current moment in AI, machine learning, whatever we want to call it? I think it's a pivotal moment. But what about the talking headshot itself? What can we do there to make it better? Here we overlap with some topics that we've covered in other episodes. Think about a dynamic location get out of the conference room. Jess and I took a trip to Italy. We said, let's have breakfast like this every morning. We tried it twice. It's horrible. <laughs> Think about authenticity. What can you do to make your interview subject reveal their true selves, their authentic passion for whatever they're talking about? In other words, what can you do to make it seem like they're not sitting on the hot seat under lights with a camera and crew staring at them? How often do you get to sneak out for a beer? Very rarely. <laughs> if it's a short interview, consider having your subject stand rather than sit. And if it's appropriate and you have a capable camera operator, walking and talking is a lot more dynamic than sitting and talking. And remember, get the eyeline right. Direct to camera only when talking directly to the audience, off camera when talking to the interviewer. And enough with the side angle shots, especially in a direct to camera delivery. Whose POV is that? Your audience is behind the camera. So take it from this talking head. We can do better with the inevitable talking heads and I'll let the talking heads remind us why.